Hello there, my friends, and welcome back to the realms of the Inner Sphere. Today is Tuesday, and although I haven't made it official, even though I've been doing it for months, it is also Battletech Day on my channel. According to the latest poll I actually made yesterday, the battle mech we're gonna cover today is gonna be a light and scouty one. Ladies and gentlemen, behold, the Raven. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about it and its variants, shall we? The Raven was a lightweight electronic warfare battle mech, which, when it first debuted at the end of the Third Succession War, was one of the first truly original mech designs in centuries. But it wasn't only that. It represented humanity's refusal to slide back in technology. Originally, the Capellan Confederation had attempted to recreate the sophisticated technology once common during the Star League era, specifically the Guardian ECM suite. While the resulting electronic warfare device was a technical success, it proved too large and too bulky to be installed on any existing mechs. Desperate for any force multiplier, the Capellans decided to build an entirely new mech around the electronics, creating the first prototypes of the Raven. At first, these experimental Ravens were meant as a standoff support unit for mech companies, designating targets for artillery and scrambling enemy sensors. In most cases though, they were assigned at the battalion level as a temporary fifth member of the command lance. When it finally saw battle, however, the Raven did not meet its lofty expectations. It simply could not provide a sufficient enough advantage to influence combat. Many were captured by the Federated Sons during the Fourth Succession War, and the design would languish as just another light mech. However, the recovery of the Helm Memory Core allowed Hellespont to create a production version the RVN-3L equal to the prototype's ambition. While heavily associated with House Liao, the Capellans were also forced to sell a number to the Free Worlds League and the Draconis Combine, the larger share going to the former. The Federated Sons and the Lyran Alliance also acquired smaller numbers of the Raven through other means, including salvage, and a large number of variants were eventually created. The Raven carried a small weapons array that was nevertheless respectable for its small size. The primary weapons were a pair of Ceres Arms medium lasers carried in the right arm, backed up by a Harpoon 6 SRM-6 mounted in the right torso, with one ton of SRM reloads in the left torso. Generally though, the Raven was kept out of direct firefights as much as possible since it was more valuable as a recon or electronic warfare asset. Indeed, any mission in which the mech was forced into combat was seen as a failure. At the time of its introduction, the Raven carried the most advanced electronic warfare equipment in all the inner sphere, all produced by Apple Churchill. A Guardian ECM mounted in the left torso blanketed friendly units with electronic jamming. Target acquisition gear was mounted in the right torso. A NARC missile beacon in the left arm with two tons of reloads in the left torso helped call down accurate artillery fire. A Hermes 210XL engine and four and a half tons of ferrofibrous armor helped save down weight, provided good armoring and a respectable cruising speed of 64 kilometers an hour. A Beagle active probe was originally thought to be installed in the center torso to help locate enemy targets, but those earlier readouts have since been determined to be incorrect. For the second part of the video, we're gonna talk about the variants. Since the Raven didn't have a huge amount of variants, I decided to keep most of them in the video. The RVN-1X this was the original 3024 prototype of what became the RVN-3L Raven. This was the unit that was pressed into service against the Federated Sons during the Fourth Succession War. 
With XL engine technology not yet available, the mech mounted a standard Omni 175 Fusion engine, giving it a maximum speed of 86 km an hour, and was protected by 4 tons of standard armor. The electronic warfare equipment at the time that this mech was built consisted of a massive 7.5 ton experimental electronic warfare suite that unfortunately didn't live up to expectations. The equipment also had an unfortunate side effect that when damaged it disrupted other systems, though normally just communications and targeting. The RVN-2X Many of the Ravens captured by the Federated Sons in the Fourth Succession War were refitted in 3030 to the 2X standard. This variant replaced the electronic warfare equipment with a large laser and added an additional 2.5 tons of armor. The RVN 3M this 3053 variant, based on the 3L variant, removed the SRM-6 launcher, the medium lasers, and the electronic warfare system and TAG laser in order to turn the Raven into a long-range fire support unit. This fire support is provided by a single 15-tubed long-range missile launcher. Additionally, the mech sports two small lasers and a small pulse laser in the event that any enemies get under the minimum range of its missile launcher. It retained the NARC beacon used by the 3L and also includes two ammunition bins for the missile launcher so the Raven can maintain its fire support even away from the supply line. The RVN 3X, the Raven X. This version uses experimental systems to increase battlefield performance. The standard skeleton is traded for a composite internal structure, and the electronic systems are replaced with a Bloodhound active probe and an Angel ECM suite. The remaining weaponry has been replaced by a laser AMS and two medium X-Pulse lasers. An XL gyro provides weight savings for this equipment. The RVN 4L. This early 3060s variant of the Raven incorporates the Confederation's new stealth armor. The mech carries 6 tons of it and also uses 10 double heat sinks for greater heat dissipation. The mech is armed with two ER medium lasers and an SRM 6, and also carries the complete electronic warfare package carried by the 3L model. The RVN 4LR. This one removes the NARC and the SRM, replacing them with an MML 7 equipped with an Artemis 4 guidance. MML, if it sounds confusing, stands for Multi Missile Launcher, which can fire both SRM and LRM. The Capellans also added a third medium laser, making this variant of the Raven an effective scout hunter. It can set up easy ambushes, because its stealth armor gives it an advantage against scouts. The RVN 4X A Capellan variant of the original prototype, the 4X was an attempt to turn the chassis into a pure combat unit. It removes the electronic warfare equipment and is outfitted with 5 jump jets and 2 machine guns with 1 ton of reloads. The armor was increased to the chassis limit of 7 tons. The RVN SR This variant is a field upgrade made by the Capellan March forces, who captured many Ravens during Operation Sovereign Justice. This modification of the 3L replaces the lasers and the tag system with four machine guns linked to a machine gun array to protect it from the infantry assaults that resulted in the capture of the mechs to begin with. The RVN SS This is another modification of the 3L by Capellan March troops. The SS removes the NARC and the missile launcher. This makes room for an additional pair of medium lasers, a small laser, a streak SRM-6, and an additional heatsink. A couple of special custom variants, which aren't exactly canon, but can be found in the MechWarrior Online game, include The RVNH Hugen 
named for one of the mythical ravens which aided the Norse god Odin, and piloted by Sergeant Odin Sigurd of the Free Rasselhaeg Republic, the Hugen Hero Mech is built around a 280 rated XL engine and an endosteel frame, fitted with two jump jets and clad in near maximum ferrofibrous armor. The Hugen is armed for close range combat, mounting paired machine guns in each arm in support of the right torso SRM 6 and the left torso streak SRM 2. Two tons of machine gun and SRM reloads are carried along with a single ton of streak ammunition. The RVN 1XLDC This variant of the 1X version was used as an arena fighter in the Solaris games. Two heat sinks were removed to allow for the installation of a dual cockpit and an additional ton of armor. The ECM-3025 is mounted in the left torso, while two heatsinks are mounted in the center torso. Together with the seven heatsinks installed in the engine, this curiously leaves one heatsink unaccounted for. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Raven Light Battle Mech for today. Some might wonder why I didn't cover the Raven 2 in this video as well. The answer to that is that I wanted to give the Raven 2 either a separate video, or maybe include it with another version 2 variant of another mech. Is the Raven among your favorite battle mechs? What do you like or dislike most about it? Feel free to share your thoughts and opinion in the comments below. Was this episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. This is GDN signing off.